adjust, and they're a great team, so I know they'll adjust, and they'll be ready when he gets back. Stephen A., should the Cavs be concerned about Durant missing time? Yes, they should. They should be very concerned, but not for reasons that people would believe. They should be concerned about Kevin Durant missing time because if Kevin Durant somehow, some way is compromised, even though the Warriors swear that he'll be reevaluated in the four weeks and he should be back in time for the playoffs, etc. If Kevin Durant, for some reason, can't play in the postseason, then obviously Golden State is severely compromised. And by virtue of being severely compromised, you've got teams like the Houston Rockets and more importantly, the San Antonio Spurs, who could potentially take them. If the San Antonio Spurs end up knocking off a Kevin Durant-less Golden State Warriors squad, then that's the likely opponent for the Cleveland Cavaliers. We recognize what LeBron is saying. They got to get through the East first. It's not a foregone conclusion in his mind. That's the right attitude for a superstar to have, etc. But in the end, we're surmising and assuming that the Cleveland Cavaliers are going to come out of the East. They're going to come out of the East, and it's against the San Antonio Spurs. You got a different kind of problem now because you got to remember that the physicality, the slower pace, the things that lend itself towards beating a Golden State Warriors squad are not applicable to the San Antonio Spurs. That's right up their alley. That's the kind of brand of basketball they want to play. That's the kind of brand of basketball they're, 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 they're made to go up against. You combine that, the size and height of a Gasol with a LaMarcus Aldridge, the defensive wizardry of a Kawhi Leonard, the experience of the Ginobili's, the Parkers, the Patty Mills of the world, etc., along with the exceptionally great coaching of Greg Popovich, who's incredibly familiar with coaching against LeBron James. That is not something that the Cleveland Cavaliers want. I am of the contention that the Cleveland Cavaliers would prefer, even with a healthy Durant, to go up against the Golden State Warriors rather than have to go up against the San Antonio Spurs. That's what I believe, and that's the reason why I would say they, need to be, they have to be concerned about Kevin Durant. They want Durant back in that lineup because they want the Warriors in the finals rather than San Antonio. Reading the between the lines alert, folks at home, when Stephen A. Smith says that he thinks that they would rather play the Warriors than the Spurs, that's not coming out of thin air, usually. That's because, Stephen A., my experience with you is everyone texts you, you, got, you, you, you have your ear to the ground. So if you're saying that, you must have heard that from multiple places, at least whispers. Am I right about that? You are correct. Right. So I'm not going to sit here and debate facts. I'm not going to sit here and debate whether or not the Cavs might be or are more concerned or some members of the Cavs or coaching staff are more concerned with the Spurs than the Warriors. I'm going to debate here whether they should be. And the answer is no, they should not be. The Spurs, although you mentioned the size of the Saul, posting ability, LaMarcus Aldridge, the length, the, the whole thing, I get it, Kawhi on LeBron, I understand the concern there. But the Golden State Warriors, this, this one doesn't have to be overthought. The Golden State Warriors, with a Durant, especially if he's at 100%, are essentially the Spurs with better players. I know, I know, they don't have the LaMarcus Aldridge or the Pau Gasol. The Cavs could be, um, could be vulnerable, excuse me, the Warriors rather, could be vulnerable to a good rebounding team like the Cavs if they have Bogut and LeBron and Tristan Thompson and Kevin Love. I understand the Styles matchup argument, but we just saw the Warriors, as I mentioned yesterday, go across the country for the second of back-to-backs. They didn't have... Kevin Durant for most of the game, and Steph Curry spent his second consecutive night ice cold. The Wizards, one of the top teams in the East, are playing at home and highly motivated, on a roll, and won by the skin of their teeth. And that's because the Golden State Warriors, like the Spurs, are extremely well coached. They're familiar with each other. They play as a machine. They have unselfish players. They can play the modern brand of basketball as well or better than anyone. And when you add Kevin Durant to the mix... And you, you, Steph Curry, MVP, Kevin Durant, MVP, Klay Thompson. They have an offense, Stephen A., where a lot of the times the best option for the opposing defense is a wide-open Klay Thompson, who might be the greatest shooter ever or at least capable of, get, of getting hotter than anyone ever. That, that oftentimes is the best option for the defense, and to mention nothing of Draymond Green and guys on the bench like Iguodala and Livingston and all that, and the championship pedigree. This one, I get why people would say, talk about the Spurs, but they should not be hopeful that, they, that Durant comes back and plays for the Warriors if they believe, that, if the idea is, yeah, because we have a better chance against the Warriors with Durant than against the Spurs, because they are wrong about that. They have a much better chance against the Spurs than against the Warriors at full strength. I'm not sure about that, and I don't see how you can say that considering that experience matters, savvy matters, uh, tempo matters, 
physicality matters. All of those things come into play come playoff time. Uh, if you're just looking at it in a vacuum and you're looking at the level of talent that exists and you're dreaming about this epic matchup between the Cavs and the Warriors, it's understandable, Max. The issue in question, however, is this. We've been talking so much about the Golden State Warriors. Let me give you a reminder. Do you realize that the, the San Antonio Spurs are 46 and 13? Do you realize that the yeah, San Antonio Spurs are the, are the number one ranked defense in the National Basketball Association? When you combine that with the fact that I look at some of their, their shooting, in terms of three-point field goal percentage, they're number one. Number one. So they make threes, all right? They take great shots. They play great defense. And it's a collective effort. And more importantly, the tempo that they play at is not conducive to something that would be advantageous for the, you know, the Cleveland Cavaliers. LeBron other than James tempo, Howell, other than... Other than tempo, though, Stephen A., everything you just said about the Spurs applies to Golden State, but with Durant, better players, period. Like, Tony well, Parker's good, even though he's older. He ain't close to Steph Curry. Uh, uh, as great as Kawhi Leonard is, Kevin Durant is better. Draymond, like, just think about the starting fives. Tony Parker, Danny Green, a very old Pau Gasol, still effective offensively, defensively not as much. LaMarcus Aldridge, you, you want to, to Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Kevin Durant, and Draymond Green? It's just more talent on one side, much more. First of all, Max, a couple of things you got to consider. Understand that the San Antonio Spurs have 10 players averaging better than 17 minutes a game. 10. It's number one. Number two, when you talk about age, we're going to assume, because we make these prognostications and beyond, based on people being healthy on the court playing. Once you're healthy and you're on the court playing, there's no back-to-back. -back. You're getting about two days rest between games, okay, because you're healthy for each game. So I don't want to hear anything about age, because at that particular juncture, when you're rested enough, to perform, it comes down to your skill, not just physically, but mentally, schematically. All of those things factor into the equation. What I'm saying to you is that even though Golden State is elite as a defensive unit, they're elite when it comes to steals, they're elite when it comes to their length and how they're able to defend perimeter play. But if you're Cleveland and you're hell-bent on going down low and imposing your physical Agreed. will against them, that is the weakness of the Golden State Warriors. It is not the weakness of the San Antonio Spurs. That's what I'm saying. By, by the way, just remember the playoffs the last couple of years. San Antonio looked like a well-oiled machine early, and then a younger, more athletic team ran them out of the building a couple times. I mean, that's how they got bounced recently. I don't see fundamentally, at least in terms of their starting five, how it's going to be any different. You're right about that, but that's always against the Western Conference foe. Never in the finals has San Antonio got run out of the gym. See, man, I'm just so grateful right. that you're They're optimistic there, about these matchups in the West and the NBA. This is a good thing. Ain't it special? Because a Ain't happy Stephen A is a happy Molly Carroll. I got to admit, I got to admit, I'm, so, I'm, I'm starting it. to feel the NBA fever now, Max. I'm starting to feel the NBA here, fever. Things are turning around. We're feeling good about yeah. it. Yeah. On that note, gentlemen, let's leave it there because we need to talk about a few NFL items. Coming up next, the Patriots are looking like they're going to keep Jimmy Garoppolo after all. Could he be the Aaron Rodgers to Tom Brady's Brett Favre? Play him, Brady. Mine, I go two for two, four takes, that shoe, three takes, not me, two takes, if you lucky, first take, stop me, four takes, that shoe, three takes, not me, two takes, if you lucky. Everybody, welcome into First Take on this Friday Eve. Thank you so much for hanging with us. Molly Karam here in Bristol. Your boys, Stephen A. and Mash. There they are. Coming to us from New York. Hi, guys. How are we feeling? What's up? What's up? What's up, Molly? What's up? We had a game last night, gentlemen. You want to get into it? Quite a game. While we hit. Quite Why a game. Hit? Let's do it. How about those Celtics? Last night did not disappoint. 24 lead changes, including 10 in the fourth, as LeBron James tied his career high with his seventh triple-double of the season, but it wasn't enough. Boston outlasting Cleveland with Bill Belichick courtside. Isaiah Thomas is the first player with at least three 30-point games versus Cleveland in a single season. Since both Dwayne Wade and Allen Iverson did it, that was back in the 05-06 season. The loss was Cleveland's first on the road this season when leading in the fourth, Stephen A. Smith, got a question for you. How legit a threat are the Celtics to the Cavs in the East? Well, I think it's a legitimate threat. I think they can make things very, very interesting. I don't see a five-game series, them getting blown away or what have you, because I think sometimes the Cleveland Cavaliers are relatively inconsistent.
And what I mean by that is they'll look like gangbusters uh, one game, and then they look like they fell asleep the next game. And Boston is just feisty. I'm still not ruling out the Washington Wizards or the Toronto Raptors, mind you, because they're legitimate threats. And again, with the Wizards being a three seed, you know, they got to fight with Boston, and that could zap a lot out of Boston if Boston were to win that series. I get all of that. But I guess what I'm saying is when I look at those two teams in particular, the Boston Celtics and the Washington Wizards, and I look at the way that they play and the way that they get up, for the Cleveland Cavaliers, you know you're the prohibitive underdog going up against LeBron James in a playoff series if you're a team within the Eastern Conference. And unlike most other teams, with these two teams, it seems to get them going. They seem to elevate their level of play to another level. Isaiah Thomas is a bona fide, legitimate league MVP candidate. He's an absolute stud. Mark is smart. I mean, this dude, he, he scares the living hell out of you when he's on the court because he's so adroit at drawing offensive fouls. Nobody, I, I don't know anybody in the league right now who's better than him at that. I think he's drawn more offensive fouls than the rest of his entire team. Avery Bradley is one of the best defenders in basketball when healthy on, on that basketball court. He's just a special defender. And I can't say enough about Brad Stevens and how he can coach. Max, I'm willing to go as far as to say this. I believe two things. Number one, this would be a seven-game series, potentially, if they faced each other in a conference finals. Uh, obviously, I'm still going to favor Cleveland, but I think it would be a seven-game series. A and B, Max, I'd go as far as to question whether or not Kevin Durant was right in going to Golden State instead of Boston because of what I'm seeing I've said, in I've... that regard. Go ahead. Well, first, just quickly about Durant. I, I, I thought Boston was a great spot for Kevin Durant. Yeah. It's too bad he didn't go there. And had he gone to Boston, in fact, they may be the favorites over the Cavs right now. But the fact is, he didn't go to Boston. And consequently, Boston is not a threat to the Cavs in the East, barring catastrophic injury, of course, to a sure. pivotal player on the Cavs, especially, obviously, LeBron James. But they're not, in fact. They're a player away. And that player, Kevin Durant would have been really nice, Paul George, Gordon Hayward, Jimmy Butler, someone like that. It's not just that they're a player away and it has to be a nice rotation piece. They're a star player away. Let's look at what just happened last night in a terrific game. And by the way, let me just say, I like you brought up, I like the fact that the Eastern Conference is chippy again. Not just good at the top with those four teams, Toronto, obviously, and, and, and Washington and Boston and Cleveland. Just, and they're a great team, so I'm going to adjust, and they'll be ready when he gets back. Stephen A., should the Cavs be concerned about Durant missing time? Yes, they should. They should be very concerned, but not for reasons that people would believe. They should be concerned about Kevin Durant missing time because if Kevin Durant somehow, some way is compromised, even though the Warriors swear that he'll be reevaluated in the four weeks and he should be back in time for the playoffs, etc. If Kevin Durant, for some reason, can't play in the postseason, then obviously Golden State is severely compromised. And by virtue of being severely compromised, you've got teams like the Houston Rockets and more importantly, the San Antonio Spurs, who could potentially take them. If the San Antonio Spurs end up knocking off a Kevin Durant-less Golden State Warriors squad, then that's the likely opponent for the Cleveland Cavaliers. We recognize what LeBron is saying. they got to get through the East first. It's not a foregone conclusion in his mind. That's the right attitude for a superstar to have, etc. But in the end, we're surmising and assuming that the Cleveland Cavaliers are going to come out of the East. They're going to come out of the East, and it's against the San Antonio Spurs. you got a different kind of problem now because you got to remember that the physicality, the slower pace, the things that lend itself towards beating a Golden State